Going with computer audio. We're admitting Carl. Hi, Carl. Give me a minute. I'm still trying to set things up. Okay. So I don't know what's happened, but as soon as I tried to share my screen, I couldn't, but like half of my split screen went away. Yeah, so you made it. I can either try to use this, which I would like to, so I could write on it for the kids. You know what I mean? Like I was going to split the screen and have the text and then the thing, and then I could write on it okay. and annotate it. But I have, this is join my Zoom meeting. You need to join with the board and? Right, I need to join with the board. So, um, what is the number? Oh, that's not what I'm oh, Slash letter. You gotta close that. Nope. Thank you. Usually when I usually when I do that, it pops up. How are you so good at this? Okay, guys, could you just give me a moment? I'm still trying to figure things out. Nine, six, eight. Zero one zero nine one nine two one nine nine. Oh, how many? Two one nine. And then hit join. Okay. Ugh. Okay, now go. Okay. Nine six eight. Zero nine one nine. Two one nine. Yeah, then it popped up. See, that's what it usually does. Yeah. And then you hit join. I hope this doesn't happen. Okay, that's fine. Somebody just came in. Okay, so now that's frozen. So then what I normally do is I come over here and I say share my screen. No, I don't say share my screen. That's what I might have to do. I do security, share screen, and then I share the screen. And then oh, so that's that half. Mm -hmm. But I need the other document. That's what so a little I don't want that to speak good. either. <laughs> all right, so, all right, I'm going to not share this screen, I guess, because, no, that's the wrong, I'm share, I shared the Zoom screen. screen. Oh. Right, so now I've got to make this bigger. Yeah. Oh, stop share. All right, we're going to do this a different way. I don't, I don't know what the deal was there. Okay, so yeah, minimize that or X out of that. X out of that. I'm sorry, this one? Yeah, and then I should be able to share. I'm sharing my screen. Okay, guys at home, can you see my screen? Okay, you guys need to join the Zoom meeting. We're not using this today. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why it's not working. Okay, if you could quickly join the Zoom meeting. Sorry for all the technical difficulties. Caden, hello. Um, we're having technical difficulties today. Um, so I tried to troubleshoot with Mrs. Simons and it didn't work. So instead of losing our whole day, we're gonna do it a little bit differently, okay? Okay. Get you guys in. Okay, so everybody should be coming into the Zoom meeting. Me, me, me. Two, four, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. Ooh, people. 
Miss Katie. Who are these people? Okay, I think that's everybody. Everybody in the room in? Yep, I am. Okay. So now what I need you all to do is I need you all to go to classroom. I need you to open up the 11 texts that we read yesterday. The PDF. The PDF, yeah. And you need to split your screen. I'm just gonna just to make my life a little less crazy. Oh, that is so weird. Where did my classroom icon go? That's bizarre. I was Was she talking about the pizza thing? I don't know. Did you want a pizza party? It's pizza if you got invited to the pizza party. I don't know. I can't do that right now, honey. I'll tell you later. I, I can't. Oh, my gosh. I can't do that right now. Sorry. I, 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 I'm doing too many other things at the moment. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, where did my 11 go now? I'm going to lose my mind right now. I'm going to lose my mind. Uh, you don't think I lost my mind? Huh? Still got a while ago. <laughs> okay, so your screen should look something like Mrs. Joe's, right? If you have your stuff in here. Um, I had to, yesterday when I did this on my screen, I had to play with the document with the multiple choice questions. Okay, so Georgia, I believe you came in. Could you just like turn your mic on and tell me that you're still there? Um, we've been having a lot of technical difficulties this morning trying to get technology to work the way Mrs. Jones wants it to work and it's we're still fumbling. So we haven't actually started class yet. Um, actually, we're going to start right now. If okay, I'm here. Out of the way. Okay. All right, so we are going to be doing multiple choice questions today. And I have a question for you guys. How many of you, when you do multiple choice questions, OMG, OMG, I didn't want that to happen. Um, how many of you, when you do multiple choice questions, don't ever go back to the text? If you're in the room, turn your Chromebook away from you right now because you're not listening to me. I could tell because you're all hiding behind your screens. Okay, be honest with Mrs. Jones. How many of you, if I said, here guys, go do these multiple choice questions right now. How many of you would just like read the questions through and never look back at the text? Come on, I know that you're out there. Yes, you would. Okay, uh, I, I'm going to show you how to do the, the questions the right way. So it's 8.15, here's what I wanna do. I want all of you to take a few moments and I want you to read these questions and answer the questions without using the text. Okay. Okay. And then we're going to go and we're going to do it the right way. Aww. All right. So actually just do number one. Let's do them one at a time. Go ahead and answer number one by yourself without looking at the text. Everybody, you guys at home too. How do we answer them? Do we like highlight it? Oh yeah, okay, so that's a good question. How do you answer them? So if you if you answer them, you're gonna click on the whatever, like if I wanted number one, I'm gonna click and then I'm gonna go to, of course I can't do this because my screen's not big, but if I move this over a little bit, oh my goodness, I'm having such difficulty today. That's not good. Oh, you have to highlight it. So you have to get your toolbar up. There it is. Okay, so there's my highlighter. I've highlighted it. Okay, say my answer is number one. I just highlighted the answer. Okay? So go ahead and just do number one. Just do number one without looking at the text. Those of you that didn't zoom in or weren't in class yesterday, you're gonna have an awfully hard time with this. 
I know you did. Thank you. Okay, stop. If you are in the room and you're finished with the question, take your right hand and stick it on the top of your head so I know you're done. Just doing number one. Alex, you done? Give me a thumbs up. Okay, we're just doing number one. It shouldn't take 20 minutes. I didn't read this. Well, you weren't in class yesterday. What can I tell you? Bella, give me a thumbs up. Just number one. Kaden, Sweeney, talk to me. I, Are you done with number one? Yep. Okay. Georgia, are you done with number one? Yeah. Okay, so let's take a look at it. It says, okay, if you're in the room, you could take your hands off. Stop playing with your beautiful drawing woman. Yes, you. <laughs> okay, number one reads, in 11, what does Mrs. Price do when she learns that the sweater is not Rachel's? Is it, does she apologize to Rachel? Does she pretend that everything's okay? Does she promise to get Rachel another sweater? Does she end class early? How many, uh, well, this is gonna be hard to do with people out in Zoom land, but I'm gonna show you where this is in the text. We're trying to figure out, if the question is, what does Mrs. Price do when she learns that the sweater is not Rachel's? If you were in class yesterday, you should kind of remember at least that she finds out towards the end of the story, right? So we should probably come over to the story and scroll scroll, scroll, scroll to the end of the story. Now, unfortunately, I don't think I can highlight um, this text on my screen. Had we been able to use the bigger screen, I would have been able to. But if you look at the very last page of the text, you should be either following my screen or going to the last page of the text on your screen. So you should be manipulating your screen at, the screen at this point. If you look at the very last page of the text, it says in this middle paragraph, but the worst part is right before the bell rings for lunch, that stupid Felice Lopez, who is even dumber than Felice Garcia, says she remembers the red sweater is hers. I take it off right away and give it to her. Only Mrs. Price pretends that everything's okay. If I could highlight, and I'm gonna try, nope, I can't, or if I could write on this text, I would highlight that last phrase in that last sentence of that paragraph. Only Mrs. Price pretends everything's okay, right? So if we go back to number one, what's the correct answer? She pretends that everything's okay, right? So if I highlight that, okay, B should be the right answer. How many of you in the room got B? You didn't get B Did, and you didn't go back to the text. Do you see it when you go back to the text, how you get it? Okay. Um, all right, so, oh my goodness. Let's look at number two. At the end of 11, why does Rachel, Rachel wish she was 102? Okay, I'm gonna tell you right now, this answer is not in black and white. You have to make an inference and it's based on the whole story. She wouldn't have to go to school, she would be far, from the embarrassment of childhood, she would have her own red sweater. She would have friends to stand up for her. Okay, now if we go back and it says when she's, oh my goodness, that is really annoying me. Yeah. Okay, it says when she's made to wear the, wear the red sweater. <laughs> really, technology is a wonderful, wonderful thing when it works. All right, so let's go back to the text to the part where She's made to wear the red sweater because that'd be a good place to start, right? Uh -huh. All right. If you find it before I do, let me know where it is. I have a sweater. Okay. This is where somebody first says that it's hers, so she doesn't put it on then. Then it says, not mine, not mine. Um, it's over here on what is page. I don't know in the text, let me look. Uh, it's over here on, oh my goodness, I can't see it. It's like, 
in the middle of the story. Okay, so it's page 151 in the text, okay? And it says here, I shove the red sweater, it's like a waterfall over the edge of my desk. And then Mrs. Price, Rachel, Mrs. Price, as she says it like she's getting mad, you could you put that sweater on right now, no more nonsense, but it's not now. This is when I wish I wasn't 11 because all the years inside of me, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1 are all pushing at the back of my eyes when I put one arm through one sleeve of the sweater that smells like cottage cheese and then the other arm through the other and stand there with my arms apart as if the sweater hurts me and it does, all itchy and full of germs. Okay, so out of the choices for number two, right? And we might not get this from this. We might have to keep reading. It says she wouldn't have to go to school. Does that have anything to do with that part of the text? No, she would be far from the embarrassment of childhood. I think so. Maybe. What are you doing? Put that away. Okay, do it and then put it away and stop playing. Stop playing. Okay, that one's a possible and she would have her own red sweater. Do you think she wants to ever see a red sweater again? No, she would have friends to stand up for. Her. If she saw one. What I didn't hear you say again. She might burn it if she sees another. <laughs> she might burn the red sweater. Okay. So from process of elimination or just from she's embarrassed. And if you go to the end of the story too, it sort of repeats that same idea. She's really embarrassed. And then right after that, when she makes her put the sweater on, the teacher makes her put the sweater on, she starts to cry. Like, and not just cry, she's sobbing, right? Okay. So our best answer here would be, I got the most right. And I don't know what happened to my highlighter again. I'm just going to go to a big screen so I can get my highlighter and be done with it. Okay. You guys help. You guys, uh, why am I? Okay. You guys with me? Anybody lost? I know this is confusing. This is not the best way to do stuff, but you know, life goes on. Let's look at number three. When Rachel is made to wear the red sweater in 11, how does she feel? Didn't I just read that part? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I actually read the wrong part for the end of this, for number two, but it, it gives you the same thing. I know. So you should have told me. I've got a lot of confusion in my brain right now because <laughs> of everything that's gone on already. Okay. When Rachel's made to wear the red sweater in 11, how does she feel? Confused, special, important, or embarrassed? Do I need to read it again? What do you think, Maddie? Embarrassed is the yeah. best answer. I've got them all right so far. Okay, some could you guys stop the nonsense in the room, please? Because somebody out there is talking and I can't hear because you guys are. So who asked to ask me a question out in Zoom land? No, I said I got them all right. You got them right. You were only supposed to do number one by yourself, woman. So I'm not sure what you're talking about. I know. Okay, no. number four. In 11, what does the red sweater symbolize? This is a huge question. We talked about this yesterday, okay, at the end of class. So symbol means something that stands for something else. So in this story, the red sweater is a huge symbol. Our choices are, does, it, does the sweater symbolize Mrs. Price's classroom, Rachel's dishonesty, Rachel's unhappiness, or does it symbolize a message of hope? So I'm gonna ask you to pick one and I'm gonna ask you to go and find your own proof. So pick one and then be ready to give me your proof. So go ahead and take a few minutes to do that. Those of you that did not zoom in yesterday and missed this, between yesterday morning and today, you should have gone on and looked at the video lesson from yesterday. And then you would have known you would have had to read a story. I found some evidence to support my claim. So Bella, when you pick your answer, you have to have proof from the story. So something in the story is making you pick the answer you're picking. 
I want you to go and find it and be ready to share it with the group. I got it. Okay. Anybody in the room need more time? Raise your hand. Okay. Children in Zoom land, could you give me a thumbs up if you're ready? Or just turn your mic on and tell me you're ready. Carl's ready. George, are you ready? George is ready. She gave me a thumbs up, a visual thumbs up. Thank you. I'm ready. Bella's ready. Alex, you ready? Caden Sweeney, you ready? Thank you. Okay, let's pick somebody from Zoom land. Um, Georgia, could you turn your mic on and tell us which answer you picked? I picked Rachel's unhappiness. Okay, so you pick C. Raise your hand if you pick C. Okay, you should have picked C. Um, Alex, well, no, I'm going to call on Alex because you just said you didn't read the story yet. Caden Sweeney, did you pick C? Turn your mic on. You did, okay. Could you tell me what the proof is for C, Rachel's unhappiness? Could you tell me where in the text that is? Talk me through it. Sure, where in the text, but I know if I find. Okay, hold on one second. I'm having a hard time hearing that. Whoa, almost okay. dropped the speaker. Lots of technology problems. Okay, Caden, talk to me again, please. Uh, well, I don't know like exactly where, but I remember it being where she's putting the sweatshirt on and she's just expressing all the feelings she's having while doing it. Okay, so I think that's on page 151. So everybody go to the text. So it's the same part that I read before, but it's the paragraph after that at the bottom of that page. So she puts the sweater on, it smells like cottage cheese, it's disgusting, right? The next paragraph, that's what I've been holding in this morning since Mrs. Price put the sweater on, my desk finally lets go and all of a sudden I'm crying in front of everybody. I wish I was invisible, it's my birthday, I shouldn't be crying in front of everybody. I put my head down and bury my face in my stupid clown sweater arms, right? She is not happy. <laughs> she, she is by no means happy. So the best answer for that one, I think, is her unhappiness. You could also say that it's her inability to speak up for herself, right? You could also say that it's her level of maturity or her level of immaturity, right? If she was as old as she think she should be at 11, if she was as mature as she thinks she should be at 11, she would be able to speak up for herself in the, in the beginning of the whole thing. If she would have just said, excuse me, Mrs. Price, that sweater really is not mine. I don't know who it belongs to. Do you think she would have been so unhappy? Do you think she would have cried? Now there is a difference because I know 11 year olds and I work with them all the time, like you guys, right? So there's a difference when you tell a teacher something like, excuse me, that really isn't mine. And it's not mine. I told you it wasn't mine all the time. And being snotty about it. Probably if she was snotty, she would have gotten in trouble. But I'm thinking if she was mature and she was able to say, I'm really sorry, that sweater isn't mine. I don't know who it belongs to Mrs. Price. That would have been the end of it. And her day would have went on. And she wouldn't have had a bad day. Just thinking, right? Okay, it is the way of life. All right, last one. Why does the author of 11 use the red sweater as a symbol? This is a tough question. Why does the author do that? I don't know. Could have used a pencil, I don't know. Maybe it's to persuade readers to buy new clothing, to help express the character's feelings, to convey a message about old age, or to inform readers about the seasons. Before we do anything else, I wanna look at this word convey. New York State loves that word. Like when you take New York State assessments in English, they love that word. What does this convey about that? I don't know why, they just like that word. Who knows what it means, anybody? I think Paige does. Well, Paige isn't even here. So 
Anybody know what the word convey means? All right, well, what would fit in that point? To blank a message about an old, old age. What would fit there? To tell. To tell. When you convey to something, you tell somebody something. You relate it to somebody. You share it with them. Okay, those are all different ways of saying the same thing. All right, so back to the question. Why does the author use the red sweater as a symbol? Is it to persuade readers to buy new clothing? Are they trying to convince us to buy new, new clothes? I don't think so. To help express the character's feelings? Maybe to convey a message about old age. Is this about old age? No. To inform readers about the seasons. Does this story have anything to do with the seasons? No. Okay, this is one of those where if no. you read the story, you can figure this out by process of elimination because the other three answers are kind of ridiculous based on the story. What's the best answer, Heather? No. Absolutely. D. That's the character's feelings. Okay. Now, Can we turn this in? hold on, Bella. Could you give me a second? Japers. <laughs> All right. I am not grading this because we did it together. But how many of you honestly would have gone through this and not gone back to the text at all? Yeah, too many of you. There is no reason, all of you need to listen to me. When you're doing multiple choice questions, there's no real reason to get the wrong answer unless you don't understand the vocabulary in the question or if you don't understand the question. But if you have a text in front of you and you're able to use the text, which every time you have multiple choice questions in my room, you have a text in front of you, you should get the right answer because the text is right there with the answer. You have to learn how to use the text. And I will say, that this year, Caden, I, I can't tell if you're paying attention or if you're sleeping back there. Okay. Um, I will say this year it's going to be more difficult because of the way we have to do this. We have to use, you know, the text on the screen. I like to have a text in front of me. I actually, and you can't do this in the textbook either, but I like to be able to write all over the text. When I used to give kids paper copies of a text, it used to be really sloppy. Like we would underline things, we would highlight things, we would write things in the margin. Why? Because that's interacting with the text. I haven't figured out how to best do that on, with the technology yet. I really haven't. Because like I can't, and, and you know that, Mrs. Jost really wanted to use this board so that the big board, so that I would have been able to annotate where the answers were for you and underline it in the text and have you do the same on your screen but I couldn't figure that out this morning, okay? Um, so it's really important, I cannot stress this enough. If you have a text in front of you, whether it's digital or whether it's physical in front of you, you should be going back to the text to find the answers, okay? All right, so to answer Bella's question, yes, so that it comes off of your thing, you can turn it in. I'm not grading it because we just did it together. So, um, we have a few, we only have a few minutes. We have about five or six minutes left to class. I don't really have anything else today. Yes, ma'am? Could you wait like two minutes for me? Um, I don't really have anything else today to go over. I will say Friday is the end of the quarter. So if you owe me any work, any figurative language work or the quote number three work, you better make sure that you have that done before Friday. Okay, um, other than that, tomorrow we're going to start actually writing a claim evidence paragraph. And the question is going to be, what is, this, what is the red sweater symbol to symbolize to Rachel? Okay, so if you did not read this story, I would strongly suggest take some time and read it. Okay, I'm gonna stop the Zoom meet because we're all done. Have a lovely day, see you around. Okay, Maddie, get out of the Zoom meet and then you Goodbye. can Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Why isn't that staying up? Because it's driving me nuts. Bye.